And welcome to Flexible Games, where today we are covering how to install Alpha 17 7 Days to Die mods. Alpha 17 has radically changed how modding works, and it's streamlined it considerably. So it's way easier to install mods that are made for the new Alpha. And as an example here, I've got one of my videos up here. This is uh, episode four of my seven day series. And in the description is the main XML mod that I've got running on my series. So the version one here, and there's a version two now, and that has some, some tweaks to traders and uh, a few other things. And uh, we can get into that in another video um, when it comes to making mods or editing mods. Today though, we're gonna do a quick sh showcase on how to install mods. So, you know, you can find this link in various places. This right here is what you click and that opens this page here. It's a Google, uh, it's a Google Drive. What you basically do is this up here in this corner, you click download and it will download the mod right here. And then that goes into your downloads. So there's the zip file that it has. Inside of that, if we load that up, you can see that there's a folder in there. That folder is the magic thing. You want to take that folder and drag it into where you have seven days installed. So Steam Apps, Common, Seven Days to Die, in seven days to die there should be a mods folder if there isn't if you are on a fresh install you can make the mods folder you just create a new folder name it mods and there you go and what you do is you drag this folder down into that folder all right and that should basically unzip the the file create the folder there's the folder right there and in that folder is everything having to do with the mod. Now, basically that's how you install mods. The next time you run the game, it will load all of the changes that mod has. Now, depending on the mods that you have and all of the different ways that people can change things, um, you know, one mod may change, say, headshot bonuses, and another mod may try to go in and change it again. Now. Depending on your load order, you may overwrite certain changes. Um, and you'll know that right away when you load the game. It will spit up. If there are errors, it will come up. Inside of the mod folder, any mod, um, I've got the simple UI mod. Uh, a lot of these uh, are installed here. Every one of these has a mod info.xml. So if we look at compass, crafting queue, forge input, all of these have a mod info.xml. If you want to disable a mod from loading, if you're if you have multiple games going where there are different mod sets loaded, especially in multiplayer servers, uh, where you shouldn't really have problems because in a multiplayer game on a server, if you're connecting to a dedicated server, you should get a copy of all of the XMLs the server has. So you, your local files shouldn't really interrupt those. Sometimes it's best to have it though because some uh, mods include their own icons and icons are not transmittable when you connect to a server. So if they have custom icons, they add new items, you are gonna need the mod because that item icons is the magic thing. To disable a mod from loading, you, the mod info XML, that's the only thing that you need to change. And what I do is I just type disabled dot disabled. And it will warn you. And now when you load the game, it will not load the changes from this mod at all. So let me move that back to XML. Now to load it again. So that's all you need to do. The mod info is is the magic key there, and in that mod info, uh, you know, just some simple some simple things like you know author and description and stuff. I'm assuming that the Seven Days crew 
is going to add a front end to enable and disable mods. Um, I, you know, it's a brand new feature, so it's probably going to be um, fleshed out a little bit. Um, in in a mod, you have various things. The my big mod has a lot of changes. It has new icons. Um, I add a crossbow repeater, a diamond axe, a quick axe, and a weed cleaver. And I also add a custom pink die for my sister, who actually plays with us. Um, in the config, you'll see a bunch of XMLs. Uh, you know, various mods have various changes. So in this config, there's XUI changes because it's a UI. Uh, it's a UI mod. My level up mod is actually very very simple. It has one file. And, you know, you can, if you want, go into the file and tweak things to your liking. So let me bring that text up here a little bit. So th this, uh, this section here, not as important as this section here. This is actually what changes in the game. So this simple mod allows you to tweak how many points you get per level and allows you to set the XP per level. Um, and so, yeah, it, you can go into any mod that changes values and, and tweak those values to however you want. We'll get into more on that in a future uh, tutorial episode. But for now, that is how you install mods and that is how you, you know, disable them and maybe, you know, play around with them a little bit. But uh, anyway, that's gonna do it for this this little tutorial. I thank everybody for watching. Please hit that like button if you uh, if it helped you at all. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.